this is space food. Except it's not space food. This is probably the biggest scam in the entire history of spaceflight. This freeze-dried ice cream sandwich developed in 1974 for NASA and often touted as astronaut space food as used on NASA space missions is all but a lie. You can find them in almost every science museum gift shop around the globe. In fact, the company sells several million of them every year, but this product has never even been to space. Hi Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu, welcome back to my channel. In this week's video, we're talking about space food. What exactly do astronauts eat and why? Let's begin. If you're going to send humans to space, then you should probably think about food. In 1961, Soviet Union's Yuri Gagarin became the first human in space. But at that time, no one even knew if it was possible to eat in space. They packed him two toothpaste-like tubes of beef and liver paste, and then one tube of chocolate sauce for dessert. Both the American and Soviet space programs recognized the challenges posed by crumb-producing foods, such as sandwiches. On Earth, gravity helps to keep our crumbs on our plates. But in the weightless microgravity environment inside a spacecraft, crumbs can float freely with the potential to be really dangerous. Scientists were concerned that these crumbs could damage equipment, irritate astronauts' eyes, or even be accidentally inhaled. And as a result, astronaut food has been meticulously engineered to withstand the journey to space while eliminating the risk of hazardous crumbs. This ongoing attention to detail ensures the safety and functionality of food in space missions. If you're dying for some bread, it is possible to prepare it as a bite-sized chunk coated in an edible gelatin layer. This innovative approach ensures that the bread remains intact and eliminates a nuisance of loose crumbs that could pose challenges in microgravity environments. During the early years of space exploration, a significant portion of space food consisted of either pureed baby-like food or these gelatinous bite-sized cubes. This is the reason that the crumbly freeze-dried ice cream sandwich could not possibly pass such criteria. By 1965, whilst the Soviet cosmonauts were indulging in salami, jelly, fresh fruits, and even caviar, Gemini astronaut John Young decided to take a break from the monotony of the prepackaged food that NASA had provided them by smuggling a corned beef sandwich in his spacesuit pocket. His crewmate, Gus Grissom, took a bite from the sandwich, and to no surprise, the crumbs quickly started to float around the cabin. NASA was not amused. In the years since Young's sandwich smuggling incident, NASA has made a number of improvements to the food that it provides to astronauts. Today, astronauts have a variety of food options available to them, including freeze-dried meals and dehydrated fruits and vegetables. This food is typically freeze-dried for two main reasons, weight and preservation. Weight is a critical factor in space travel due to the high cost of launching and transporting supplies into space. Freeze drying removes water from the food. This significantly reduces its weight. Water is heavy and adds unnecessary mass to the payload. By removing water through the freeze drying process, the food becomes lightweight, making it easier and more cost effective to transport to space. Like me, you're probably thinking, that it's strange because water is re-added to rehydrate the freeze-dried meals and make them edible. So where is this weight benefit? Well, you need to remember that water is more readily available in space. Astronauts have access to water through systems that recycle their urine, condensation, and other waste products. This means that the additional weight of water for rehydration is relatively negligible compared to the savings achieved during the initial transportation of the freeze-dried food. Freeze-drying is also an effective preservation method that helps extend the shelf life of food. It can last for 25 years or more if stored properly. In the freeze-drying process, the food is frozen and then subjected to a vacuum, causing the ice to sublimate directly from a solid to a gas, bypassing the liquid phase. This process removes moisture from the food, preventing the growth of bacteria, mold, and other microorganisms that may be causing spoilage. 
Without moisture, the food remains stable and it retains its nutritional content for an extended period. This preservation technique ensures that space food remains safe and edible over the long durations of space missions. But it's not all just rehydrated foods. In 1970s, Skylab, the first US space station, marked a significant advancement in space food. Astronauts had access to a freezer, which let them store ice cream, the real stuff, not the freeze-dried phonies. By 2008, the International Space Station was installed with a hot water dispenser, and this allowed astronauts to have hot meals. But it wasn't until 2020 that they actually got a refrigerator up there. Today, the ISS has a more sophisticated food storage system equipped with refrigerators, freezers, an oven, and even hydroponic garden that grows fresh food. This allows the astronauts on the ISS to have a wider variety of food to choose from, and it also helps to keep them healthy and energized. Over time, advancements in food technology have enhanced space meals. Freeze drying and dehydration techniques help to preserve food, reducing its weight and extending its shelf life. Irradiation, packaging and vacuum sealing techniques help maintain food quality and safety. But logistics and packaging are not the only factor in space food. Space nutritionists also need to think about the nutritional needs and psychological well-being of astronauts. This means taste, texture and variety of space food. In terms of nutrition, space food is designed to have high calorific density. Spacecraft have limited space and weight capacity, and calorie dense foods are easier to store and transport to and in space. Astronauts also need to eat a lot of calories to maintain their energy levels. The human body burns more calories in space than on Earth because of the increased demands of working in a microgravity environment. Astronauts on long duration missions need to eat on average 3,000 calories per day, which is about 500 more calories than they would need to eat on Earth. Food can lose nutrients during processing and storage in space, and also the nutritional needs change in space. For example, astronauts need more calcium and vitamin D to help with the bone degradation in space. But on the other hand, the body produces more iron in space. This is because iron is related to the transport of red blood cells in the body. But in microgravity, you don't need as much oxygen. The heart and lungs do not work as hard, so you end up with more iron storage. Thus, astronauts need less iron. The human digestive system also does not work as efficiently in microgravity, so you might see other nutrients not being absorbed as well in space. Maintaining astronauts' appetites and enjoyment of food is crucial for their psychological well-being and overall nutrition. However, microgravity can affect the taste and texture of food. Space food is tasteless. This is the same problem we find on planes. There was a study that showed the flavor of tomato juice tastes better in the air due to the noise level on an airplane. And this influences a human's perception of taste. But it's also not unusual for both in plain food and space food to have extra sugar and salt added as our taste buds are less sensitive to these flavors at high altitudes. It's a challenge to reproduce all of the flavors in space as the processing of food, typically via high heating or UV processing to kill bacteria, will also change the taste. In particular, the flavor of citrus fruits like oranges and lemons are tricky ones to get right. In addition to the taste, the feel of food may be quite different in space. Because there's no gravity, there's also no force to hold food together. So quite often food becomes powdery or crumbly, which is kind of bad, as I said earlier. But also the liquid circulation can make foods more puffy. Designing food that is not crumbly, but also not too sticky, not too dry, because there's low humidity up there, is more than challenging. Developing a space menu meal can take several years from research to recipe, testing and then certification of safety. Rest assured, the best people are on the case. New technologies are being developed all the time, and these include micro-encapsulation to encapsulate nutrients in small beads that are resistant to nutrient loss. This will allow astronauts to get the nutrients that they need without having to eat large amounts of food. 3D printing can improve the taste and texture of food and taste bud engineering to stimulate taste buds in space and help improve the taste of food.
Space food technology is not just beneficial to astronauts, but it can help us better understand the health nutrition of people in extreme environments on Earth, like on the top of the Himalayas. In fact, hikers rely on similar food plans. It can help us better understand eating disorders on Earth, and it relates to the dietary regimes of elderly people. Alcohol is still unfortunately strictly prohibited in space, and this is not surprising because it affects an astronaut's judgment, although there is a secret rumor of a Russian stash on the ISS. And to this day, carbonated drinks have still not flown to space. It's a huge problem, namely that the carbon dioxide bubbles could escape and cause havoc. But that's not stopped private companies developing the technology. Overall, space food is still not so great but it is improving. So for now, if you love food, space is probably not the best place for you. That's all for this week's video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe.